So welcome back guys and thanks for stopping by. Today we're going through the DJI Go 4 app for the Mavic 2 Pro. Now if you're new to quadcopters in general, you're going to want to listen to all this information start to finish. There's a lot of information in here. If you've been around the block a few times and you've had uh, experience with the Phantom, the Mavic Pro, or the Mavic Air, any of those quadcopter quadcopters, a lot of this is going to seem like material that you've seen before. So go ahead and feel free to jump to the links that I'll provide in the description that will jump you to certain sections that you need to find information on. So with that being said, sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's watch this awesome sunrise. Okay guys, so here we are in the DJI Go 4 app. I'll share my screen out so you guys can see exactly what I'm going through. So I'm going to start with the top left of the screen, go just like a book, go left to right and then top to bottom, right? So first off, we're going to start off with the DJI icon on the top left. Go to the top right of that screen and you'll see those three bars. And all you really want to see here is your flight record or find my drone. If you ever lose your drone, this is where you're going to go to help locate that. Hit go fly to go back to the main page. All right, next up is the in-flight GPS green section. This is basically just a big general status page. So I'll click that. It's going to tell you everything about the current aircraft status. The important things to note here, this is where you go if you need information on the latest firmware. If you need a recalibration of any type, you're going to see some kind of an error message here. All right, so let's jump back out. So the main thing to know about the DJI Go 4 app is there is a ton of information on here but it's very, it can be very redundant. So, so let's try to categorize that. So there's three things that you need to know for the DJI Go 4 app. One is if I want to change settings to the quadcopter itself. Number two is if I want to change settings to the camera itself. And number three is I need to access the intelligent flight modes. That's pretty much all that you need to know, right? So, it, so next up after the in-flight GPS, you've got this quadcopter and then position written right after it. This is kind of a, a major folder, if you will. So I'll hit that, and, and you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, you've got this quadcopter icon, you've got the, the uh, visual navigation system, the radar symbol, uh, then you have got have the remote controller, the HD signal, the battery indicator, the, the gimbal, and then you've got these three dots down at the bottom. So just to compare, so I'll take a screenshot of this, and then go all the way to the right hand side and you've got these three dots and let's look at that again so now you have the exact same menu items here so you don't need to memorize two different things here all right so and in between the quadcopter position icon and the three buttons on the right you've got a basically a display of the satellite linkage which is currently shows me i've got 17 satellites and then you've got the icon that tells you if the radar is on the, uh, the visual navigation system is on or not and then you've got the remote controller and the strength signal next to that you've got HD signal next and those are basically shortcuts to that other main folder in the quadcopter position or in the three bars to the right so let's go through each one of those and I'm just going to use the one on the far right the three dots and we'll go through these one at a time so first up is the, the uh, MC settings this is the remote ID the home point settings, the enabling of dynamic home point, you can turn that on or turn it off, return to home at current altitude, intelligent flight modes, S, P, and T, that is sport mode, normal mode, and tripod mode. Next is the return to home altitude, you can set that here. I have mine set to 55 meters, which is about 180 feet. Um, beginner's mode, you can turn that on if, if this is your first quadcopter. Maximum altitude, you can set that here as well. Um, advanced settings down here at the very bottom. This is important. You've got the EXP settings and the sensitivity settings. These are very important um, if you want to control the sensitivity of the sticks on your controller. So mine I have it set to 0.25 on the throttle up and throttle down and then 0.20 on the other two items. And what that does is it reduces the sensitivity of the sticks so it allows you to make much slower movements you know, while you're flying, while you're turning, while you're yawing. Next, let's go back to sensitivity, um, attitude, brake, and yaw endpoint. Currently, I have mine set to 100, 130, and 75. And then you can go back to default. So those are those are things that I've I've found that have been helpful for to me in the past. So all right, so let's go back to uh, the next one down. So we started with the quadcopter icon. Let's go next to the virtual the visual navigation settings. 
and here you can either turn this on or turn it off and I leave this on at all times unless I'm going through a very narrow space like you see right here so you have also on this section the bottom auxiliary lighting currently set to auto I can turn that on and I see the light up there in the sky and then I'll turn it back to auto and it turns right back off and it'll just land when the when it's low light type conditions all right so advanced vision settings at the bottom these are very you know specific ones that you want to turn on and off again I would just leave these on all the time there's really no need to, to turn them off in any way it's there for your safety all right so next up is this remote controller icon we'll go here you got your remote controller settings stick mode you can change that button customization good place to do that here I've got my C1 button sent to center autofocus and my C2 button sent to uh, set to camera forward and camera down so I can just quickly flip down if I'm gonna land I can exact see exactly what is beneath me you can also customize the 5d setting which is this little button right here in the middle of the, the uh, controller uh, and that's pretty much all you need right there so let's go to the next one down HD setting definitely want to turn this one on um, I leave my channel mode at dual that way it'll just flip back and forth between the, the, the best channel for this flight channel mode is auto uh, what you want to change here is the H the image transmission mode it comes in regular mode but and that's going to be very choppy on your screen if you leave it like that so what you want to do is go to HD mode and you're going to get a crystal clear 1080p image transmission back to your smartphone all right next one down is the battery shows my aircraft battery status you don't need to ever go here unless you're having battery issues and this would basically show if you had different levels in the different cells of your battery and that would indicate a problem and when you would need to replace that battery You've got your low battery warning here I'm currently set at 25 percent I believe that's the default just leave it like that it's fine the next thing down is the gimbal settings all right I leave mine in um, and follow mode next we want to go down to the gimbal the camera gimbal advanced settings this is an important section by default this is set to it is I think it's set to 20 mine says one for some reason but uh, I'll go here and I leave mine at nine and then my gimbal pitch smoothness I put that at 20 so what this does is it, this will slow down the speed of the gimbal when you're when you're kind of panning down, and then the gimbal pitch smoothness will will slow down the point at which it stops from panning down. So it won't just stop; it'll kind of slowly stop. All right. So I leave mine like that. You can you can play around with the settings here, but it's very it's very helpful in getting better shots. All right. So next you've got these three bar these three dots at the bottom units I go with Imperial units I'm in the United States that's what I'm comfortable with but that's where you would change it um, next up is the video caching options that you have there and then down towards the bottom you can go you can change different you know full screen mode single finger or double finger so that's fine and then um, that's pretty much all there is with the general settings so again that is top top left to top right don't get confused about that just go to the three dots on the right and that will jump you to the sections that you need and then each of those other things are just simple shortcuts two folders in that three dot section all right next row on the top on the top is a very thin line up there that's green red and orange and it basically tells you how much battery time that you have left and when you need when you need to start returning back to your home point currently mine has 14 minutes 23 seconds left this is very uh, a very helpful uh, visual icon to have all right next up moving right along is the camera settings for the uh, camera on the gimbal so right now I have my ISO set for 100 my shutter is 1 over 80 my f-stop is 2.8 um, my EV value is 1.3 right now my white balance is sunny currently at 5800 Kelvin I'm shooting at 4 4k at 30 frames per second I have one hour and five minutes of capacity left now one hour and four minutes of capacity left I'm shooting in manual mode and my auto exposure is unlocked and now if you want to go and change the camera settings you go to this little squiggly mark here on the bottom right there and this goes into your current camera settings so as we just saw before 
my I'm shooting in manual mode uh, my aperture is 2.8 shooting at 1 over 80 at the moment and I can actually darken that down as the sun's coming up it's getting brighter and brighter and my exposure value is getting a little bit overexposed All right and we can start recording again okay so that's what where that is and you're looking at that 0, 0.0 at the bottom so that's basically your exposure value um, all right next up go to the video icon here all right, so, so top to bottom, you've got the video size. I'm shooting at 4K 30. The options are listed here. I'm shooting in high quality, 30 frames per second. You can go all the way down to 1920 over 1080. Video format, MP4 versus MOV. I'll change that to actually MOV since I'm editing on a MacBook. White balance, different options here. Basically, you want to choose either sunny or cloudy. I wouldn't choose auto because it'll flicker when you go from shadows to, to bright areas. Incandescent, if you're inside, wouldn't recommend it. And then neon, or you could do a custom a custom white balance. All right, moving right along, you've got your style. Currently mine is set to none. I had negative ones across the board on the Mavic Air and I think on the Mavic Pro, but this is a totally different camera system, so, so I, I wouldn't say that the, it's gonna be the same from platform to platform. This is gonna be very specific to the camera itself. So, but this is where you go in and change that. And next up is your color profiles. But you can change that to D-Log, HLG, or none. Switch to H265, all right? So you gotta be in the H265 right here. So I'll go to H265, go back, color profile. Now I can shoot in D-Log. There we go, nice flat image. And next over to the right is the settings. So these are basically icons that you can turn on to have listed on your page. Right now I've got my histogram turned on. I like to see if my shot is overexposed as I'm flying. Lock gimbal while shooting. These are kind of default. Uh, auto fo focus continuous. I leave that on if I'm shooting in auto, in, in auto mode. HLED auto turned off. Keep that on so that it's not, so your, H your LEDs are not on while you're recording. I like to have my grid on as well. I like to have the grid, uh, it's just the three, you know, the nine sections instead of the grid with the diagonals. It helps me frame my shots pretty well. Uh, center point I have off, peaking threshold I have set to close. You can change that here, high, low, high standard and low. And that's all there is in this section. So that is all there is here, guys, from the top left and then to the top to the bottom. You can change from video to photo with this button here. So now I'm into photo mode change back to video mode simple as that all right now across the bottom go through this very quickly 392 is my distance my height is 251 feet my horizontal speed is zero right now because I'm hovering my vertical speed is also zero all right so next over here on the left hand side you've got the a pads you can turn that on here this basically will help you avoid objects as you're flying don't trust this absolutely but it is there to help you so it's good to have that on Next up is your intelligent flight mode settings. So I go into this icon right here. Basically that is the normal mode icon, but you've got hyperlapse, quick shot, active track, point of interest, tap fly, and cinematic mode all listed here. So first up, hyperlapse. All right, so in hyperlapse mode, you've got free, circle, course lock, and waypoints. We'll go through those in a different video, but this is where you would access the different types of, of hyperlapse. All right, next up, quick shots. Hit the OK button. All right, so quick shots, basically you just draw an, uh, a box around an object and, and then choose one of these options here. You've got the droney, the circle, the helix, the rocket, the boomerang, and asteroid. Good to go. Let's go back. Active track. Active track has a couple different options as well. All right, so you've got trace, profile, and spotlight. This is supposed to be revamped from the previous models where it can actually follow you, follow you as you pass behind an object. So I'll be testing that out for sure to see if this is improved at all and I'll let you know okay next up is point of interest point of interest has two different options as well it's got this one that um, you basically draw a box around it similar to the active track and then it will zero in on that object and fly around it and then you've got another one that is specific to GPS we basically go over to the point say, low battery warning 
set a wave, you know, set a marker there, and then you have to fly out in a certain type of radius, and then it'll rotate around that. All right, next up is tap to fly. Tap to fly has a couple different options. Hit OK there. You got forward, backward, and free. Forward and backward are, are self-explanatory. You can you can fly forward towards an object on a perfect line. You can fly backwards in a perfect line, or or you can fly free. It will go on a line almost like a dolly shot, but you have full control over the quadcopter to rotate in any direction as you are flying on that dolly line. So more on that later. And then lastly, you've got the cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is great, especially if you're up high, flying above anything where you're not gonna have a risk of running into any objects. It, uh, it slows down the braking, it slows down the, the actual movement, so you're just kind of floating effortlessly up there in the sky. Um, and again, this is very helpful to get nice smooth shots just be you know cognizant that if there's objects around this is not the mode to fly in okay so i think that is everything that there is on the dji go for app let me know in the comments i think there's a way to turn off this beeping noise and somebody mentioned this in the past and i forgot where that was but but let me know in the comments because i would be very interested in being able to turn this battery level is low turn the aircraft off. will go to the home point in 10 seconds all right all right guys so that is everything that there is to know about the dji go for app for the mavic 2 pro I hope you found the answers to the questions that you had. If not, drop me a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So with that, guys, let's get outside, get some flying done. It's, it's Labor Day weekend. It's a great time. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.